you watch any amplitude demos, maybe even some of mine, you know how powerful it can be and how easy it is to build charts, funnels, retention charts, dashboards, everything in a few minutes. But the caveat is you need data inside your Amplitude account. In this video, I want to walk you through multiple ways to how you can start ingesting data into Amplitude, often within minutes, so you can start to build those awesome reports. We're going to look at lots of options. Shopify, Google Tag Manager, Segment.com, and try to figure out what is the best way for you to start ingesting data into Amplitude right now. This means that you can avoid looking at something like this. Here is just an, an empty dashboard in Amplitude, no data to put into it, and how to go from that into data flowing in a way that's reliable. And then of course, from there, how you can start to get more insights out of your data. Because if you delay setup, you're gonna delay insights. And if you delay insights, you delay your ability to take action. So let's jump right in. Now you've seen the charts, you've seen the dashboards, I'm sure you've seen some stuff like this, right? This is actually just a sample dashboard here in Amplitude. But you can see there's all these reports, pie charts and different colors and breakdowns, funnels and everything seems to work. And you know, it's clear that there's all these insights inside this Amplitude account. And then someone has gone out there and built amazing looking dashboards, right? Maybe you're not responsible for this or you're hoping to get Amplitude set up for your product and you know this is your end goal. You wanna have all these amazing charts and dashboards, the ability to create them in just a few minutes, and of course, figure out how to take all that into insights. So no, it's tough. You start with an empty Amplitude account and now you have to figure out, okay, how do you even get data into this product? Now, Amplitude has made lots of improvements here. It used to be that, you know, you start with an empty account and you have to do quite a lot of work to get even some basic data in. But there's several options now that can make this much easier. Maybe not as easy as Google Analytics. Historically, Google Analytics has been the easiest way to just get data in, but I'll show you some alternatives that are pretty comparable. Now, the good news here is that you don't need to set up a full tracking plan. Uh, we have talked about tracking plans endlessly in this channel. I love tracking plans. I typically make tracking plans when I work with clients, but I know that sometimes speed and the ability to get data in is more important than fleshing out a full tracking plan. So you can see this as a maybe hybrid solution where if you get data in quickly, you can start to build insights, you can get momentum, you can get more resources that then allow you to maybe go deeper into a tracking plan. So I understand the practicalities of how you actually get buy-in when you get tools like Amplitude implemented and how you can show quick wins to be able to get more support. So let's dive in and look at six options you can use to get data into Amplitude, often in minutes. Option number one, auto capture. Now for a long time, Amplitude rejected auto capture. It's sort of like the world of Google Analytics. The idea you can just copy and paste a little JavaScript snippet into your website and it collects a bunch of data. But now all the tools have really come around in this. So Amplitude does have auto capture. You can see it here. In particular, if you go to the SDK documentation, this is the browser SDK. Of course, this is the JavaScript website SDK. We can see that the auto capture here will do a few things for you. It will gather attribution data. So this will be things like UTMs, typically first touch and last touch of the five core UTMs, UTM content, source, medium, term, and campaign. It also typically has other attribution attributes that are helpful today, the click IDs, like the Facebook click ID, the Google click ID, the G click, there's probably Microsoft and TikTok and LinkedIn and so on. We have page views, of course. Every time a page loads, an event will be fired. If you have a single page app, you have to double check this, of course, because the loading of it may be a bit funky, so you may need to tweak that. But if you have a regular website, you'll be completely fine. There are sessions, a session started, session ended, and from there you can have all kind of calculations around what is the average session length, how many sessions users are doing. There's form interactions. Typically, this might be a form start, form submit, and maybe even interaction on the input fields themselves. Kind of handy, right, if you're kind of trying to track lead generation. You have file downloads, the download for kind of any external file, and element interactions. This is kind of like an element click. This is actually not bad. This is quite a few things that are being tracked automatically. You simply add the little JavaScript snippet, kind of like a Google Analytics, plug into your website, and all the stuff will start to flow into Amplitude. You are able to configure some things here, right? Of course, you can see if you can disable some things that you may not care about, but generally this auto capture will be quite good on the website anyway. There are auto capture on iOS and Android, but it tends to be pretty limited, typically like an application install, application open type thing, maybe a screen view. The website is typically where auto capture kind of shines. So if you take the JavaScript snippet the AMP2 gives you, and then you add it, 
to your website. It's kind of what it looks like right here. All the capture will start to flow data in, in minutes, as is as close as you can get to the Google Analytics world. It doesn't have as much data as what Google Analytics might capture. Google Analytics typically has a bunch of data kind of processes on its own, like gender, things like the bounce rate and, and, and other metrics. But this is option number one for how to ingest data into Amplitude quickly. Option number two is through Google Tag Manager. You may already have a Google Tag Manager container so you're able to actually load Amplitude through that to kind of stick to your, your process. There's actually a special tag. If you go here and go into the community and then we're gonna look for Amplitude right there. So here's the same browser SDK. Let's actually add it to, to the workspace here. Show you what it looks like. So this just simply loads the same browser SDK that we were just looking at earlier, but it does in a Google Tag Manager friendly way. We put your API key and then under this, we have the same auto capture logic, right? And you have the auto capture options in case you want to disable some things, right? It's the same things we saw before, right? The page views, the marketing attribution, the sessions, the form interactions, the file downloads, the element interactions, if you want that. It gives you some freedom around if you want to exclude certain CSS selectors. So that's all there, right? Enabled by default. Maybe you're the EU, the European Union, so you need special data storage rules. You might want to enable the session replay plugin or the guides and service plugin. These are kind of a couple extra options Amplitude has and everything else is Google Tag Manager standard. So this is another way that, again, you can add this tag that's maintained by Amplitude into your Google Tag Manager space. You simply plug in your API key, the same auto capture will trigger here. Plus you have a couple other options here. Publish this into your workspace into production and bam. Now you have data flowing into Amplitude again within a few minutes. Option number three is relevant if you use a tool like Shopify. Now Amplitude has added a bunch of sources and destinations, kind of like a CDP, like a light customer data platform. So if you go to the sources, you know, which is here in the data and then sources, we can see the different ways data can be ingested here. If you add the browser SDK, you're gonna see a source here that's gonna say the browser SDK, but there are other sources of data, right? So here's a JavaScript SDK that we just were looking at. If you search here for Shopify, you can see that now Shopify has special app they can add for Amplitude. You add your permissions, you add your API key, and then Shopify will send a bunch of events to your Amplitude store. Uh, this is typically the events around the checkout. So, you know, when products get added, when a cart is viewed, when a cart is started or a checkout started, when a purchase is completed, and then Shopify will send any kind of relevant properties here. Quite handy, quite nice, right? You get a bunch of sort of purchase data customer data from your Shopify store into Amplitude. It's all happening through this sort of automatic integration between the two tools, which tend to means it's also kind of reliable, right? Because then this is sort of maintained by Shopify. It's probably done through some kind of API connections between the two tools. So again, it's, it's a way. Now this mostly applies to Shopify. So if you're not using Shopify, you're not there, but so many people are using Shopify that this is a quick win for any of them who are on this specific platform. Option number four actually relates to Google Analytics. So I wanna show you that. So in, we go back to sources here, we can see that Amplitude has actually created what I think is a kind of clever source integration. So you can actually do Google Analytics through two options. I wanna show you both of them. One is this Google Analytics quick start. So effectively you add this little JavaScript snippet to your website. And what this will do is it will forward all the Google Analytics events into your Amplitude account. So Google Analytics for today, which is a standard, will capture a bunch of things for you, kind of similar to the other capture, right? They can capture page views, form interactions, file downloads. I don't think they have element clicks, but Google Analytics 4 has this bunch of default events that it can capture for you on the site. Of course, there's a bunch of other Google Analytics data that gets captured. So this little JavaScript function here that Amplitude wrote will sort of insert itself in the Google Analytics stream of data, take those events and forward them into Amplitude. Now, if you're just starting from scratch, you might be thinking, what's the point? I can just do the auto capture for Amplitude, which is true. But many companies have actually built on top of Google Analytics. So you may have a bunch of custom events that you're sending to Google Analytics and you're thinking, man, I don't wanna re-implement all these events. This is your solution, right? You can keep all your Google Analytics integrations for now and simply use this to forward all of the data, the default and the custom data into Amplitude and get that into your Amplitude project. So I think it's actually quite clever. You're still kind of relying to the Google Analytics data model, which is not the best. But again, from a, a quick start portion, this is a very fast way to get data in. Now, there is another option here, which I wanna show you right here, which is the BigQuery option. So Google Analytics 4 makes it really easy to export all your data to BigQuery. It's gonna be done on a streaming basis or on a recurrent basis, like, you know, every day or something. And then from there, you can actually then bring it in into Amplitude. So it's kind of the same thing. It's likely a little bit more reliable in the sense that all the data goes to BigQuery in a reliable manner, you know, through Google Analytics. 
and then you can import it from BigQuery and this is also very reliable. You have to do some work around Google Cloud, of course. Just select the bucket where the data is. You need a service account. This will be validated and then Amplitude will then import the BigQuery data on some kind of frequency. So very handy. I have done a lot of sort of BigQuery imports into Amplitude and they, they tend to work very well. And again, the Google Analytics data has already structured the data for you in BigQuery. You just simply pull it from there into Amplitude. Option number five is a data warehouse. We talked about briefly with Google Analytics, but now we can actually talk about it on a more broad basis. So if we go here, these are all the data warehouses that Amplitude supports as a source of data. We of course have BigQuery, Databricks, Snowflake. This is technically BigQuery, right? Google Analytics through BigQuery. But the handy thing here is your team may already have a bunch of data in a data warehouse out there. So instead of you know re-implementing things or, or going through again a really heavy tracking plan, you may simply just pull in data from the data warehouse into here. Now we're a little bit in the more advanced stages here. The data of course has to be in the right format. So you have to double check that all the event names and the event properties and user properties have been structured correctly. So this is not necessarily the fastest option, but you may already have the data and build in different views or queries of the data could be relatively quickly if you have the right skills or if you're able to pull in the right resource into your project. So I do wanna mention that as a viable option. But of course, you have to double check that on your data structure. And option number six is a CDP, a customer data platform. You may have something like this in your company already. This is segment.com, of course, one of the most popular CDPs out there. You have MParticle, you have Rudder Stack, you have lots of options out there. So in here in the CDP, you know, if you have a data source, for example, you know, I have this basic installation I use in my website, mostly for this kind of YouTube videos that takes data from a, a JavaScript source. And then from there, I can collect a few events. Let's see what we're collecting here. It can be that much. Yeah, basically just a page view. From there, you know, I can add a destination into Amplitude, that will send data and add a destination as CDP is typically very, very quick. The data has already been designed and structured by segment.com or whatever CDP you're using. So plugging in a new destination here might take minutes, if that. You might honestly do this in like 60 seconds and then all the data will start to flow into Amplitude. You may need to double check that the data has all the necessary attributes, but generally it's likely it will. So this is a very viable option if your team has a CDP. So just kind of ask around, double check if this is actually a possibility within your team. Once your data is live, you'll see something like this. Here is the live events inside Amplitude. We have the live events actually enabled here. We see there's 800 users in the product right now and all those events are coming in every few seconds. They all have event properties, they all have user properties, depending on what kind of option you chose from the six we covered. And this is awesome, right? Once you have the events, you can start to build charts, you can start to build reports. All the things you have seen in other Amplitude tutorials can all be done, again, usually in a few minutes, and you can start to get those insights and those actionable next steps. Now, you can always expand your setup later. I highly recommend you do to really think about all the other sources of data that could be really valuable for your team, but they might need some development help especially like back end events or other types of events that you have to go through a developer to get them. Do put them on the roadmap, but this video is all about how you can get data quickly so you can start to build cool reports they can show to the rest of your team. Now, if you wanna dive deeper into what the Amplitude implementation might look like, if you're ready to kind of put in requests for resources and see how you can improve your data, then the next video is just for you. In the next video, I'll dive deeper into the entire Amplitude setup, the kind of setup that I think every team should go through at some point to have a full tracking plan, to look at all the possible SDKs, make choices, have events, pull different developers in, and get all the data that you need into Amplitude, not just the, the things that may be readily available. So check out that video next. It's a great next step if you're ready to dive deeper into data, if you have a few quick wins, and now you wanna go even deeper. My name is Ruben Garta, and I'll see you in the next video.